I'm Gerd Lenhardt, futurist and CEO of the Futures Agency, together with my colleague and friend Yuri van Geest. Yuri is a very accomplished, internationally known author and speaker and advisor, and he wrote recently the book called The Exponential Organization, co-written with uh, Salim Ismail. And he's also the ambassador for Singularity University in Holland. And we've done quite a bit of work together talking about the future of things, whatever sector we're working in. Uh, today we're going to talk about banking, financial services. So I live in Switzerland, which you know. Uh, right now, we have a bit of a crisis in Switzerland because of the euro and the Swiss franc, but also because the Swiss banks are lo losing their identity of being secure and safe and secret mm -hmm. and opening up the banking market. So the question I have for you, what, what are the key trends that you see in banking uh, for the next, say, five to 10 years, and what could banks do if they want to survive, if they can survive, or are they going to be the next record label? Yeah, so there's a lot of questions. So first of all, the key trends. I think the financial services business is in a is coming into a triple disruption scenario. The first disruption is by different individual exponential startups that will attack one individual banking service. Let's say lending, payments, uh, mortgages, like uh, investments. Yeah, so they, w they will be being disrupted today by TransferWise, by Kickstarter, by Lending Club, mm -hmm. by eToro, ST Mice, Bitcoin, the whole thing, right? So that's disruption number one. The second disruption is that those startups will merge over time in the next five to ten years because they have a common enemy. My enemy's enemy is my best friend, uh, Sun Tzu. So they will merge or align or um, in the next five years. The third disruption is called the blockchain, uh, the peer-to-peer uh, infrastructure for trust. It's basically a way to decentralize trust. And that this will undermine fundamentally the, the core uh, value of financial services over time. So th this disruption will be, will be more longer term, mm -hmm. or will, will be the most disruptive of all. You know, when I talk to my banking uh, clients in, uh, all over the world, uh, anywhere really, I hear this thing a lot that people are saying, okay, we've heard this before, right, and, and we did in the late uh, nine, 19, uh, 2000, right, about the internet bubble, didn't happen. And the second thing is that uh, they always think that regulation and governments mm -hmm. will prevent this peer-to-peer, -peer un, un, uh, you know, encrypted environment from happening. And, and what do you think about that? It's uh, interesting to a certain degree. Um, the question is, how long will this uphold and the regulation to protect, let's say, the, the interests of the incumbents? I think in the end, consumers will always win, or end users. What they want will happen over time. Well, in the music business, you know, we said the same thing, it didn't happen, right? I mean, yeah. they were protected for 12 years, and the consumer is still not really getting what they want, except for YouTube and maybe Spotify. But the, the, the music business has pretty much gone down the toilet, the recorded music business, as, as, a, uh, you know, as a consequence. The same thing will happen here? Yeah, I think it's quite an analogous um, to a very large degree with the media industry in the last 20 years. There will be disruption. It's all about value creation and value capture. If you look at the mix, the, the symmetry of this in financial services, it doesn't make sense. There's a lot of there's a small value creation and a lot of value capture. So people don't want that, don't like that. So there's room for disruption to have a more, let's say, symmetric playing field of value capture and value creation. Absolutely, but I mean, in your book, The Exponential Organization, mm -hmm. You talk about how this happens with companies that are 10x, you know, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. do things 10 times as good. Yeah, so how could they do that? Uh, actually, that's already happening, right? Because if you look, for example, at TransferWise, it's 90% cheaper than the, the, the incumbents offering today mm -hmm. through, tra through transfer money. If you look at Lending Club, if you look at Bitcoin for, for payments, or maybe Clinko or Stripe or the Alipay or Apple Pay, so they have a different model. Uh, not 10x cheaper, but they're also considerably cheaper than, let's say, the alternative today. So if you look at the, the broad spect spectrum, uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. I think that the, uh, the banking uh, people around the world are wondering at this point to whether so many parts of their business are going to be eaten away by startups and then by other companies like uh, neighboring companies like Google and Facebook yeah. and the banking license and Alibaba and, and what have you. Right? that what is going to be left for them. I mean, now we're looking at, uh, I think, Goldman, uh, not Goldman, um, um, American mm -hmm. Express, and some bank just invested into the lending club. Uh, mm -hmm. scenario, mm -hmm. peer-to-peer mm -hmm. investment. Mm -hmm. 
So would that be a way for them to fund the enemy, so to speak? Or no? That's a very big question. I would say they have to be willing to disrupt themselves or die. If you have to disrupt or die, and disrupt yourself or die. So they have to look at to, to create innovation themselves or with partners or how to invest in a portfolio of exponential startups, disrupting them to make sure that they will be in business over time. So it's like a hatching strategy. Uh, external startups, your own innovation, dis disrupting yourself and your co core business. But in most cases, to, to innovate or revitalize your own core business won't be enough to survive because it's such a disruptive scenario uh, that we talked about. You won't uh, make it through it. I, mean, I always say that this, these kind of businesses are what I call uh, digitally contestable. You know, they, they can be contested because of technology. Uh, and you, if you're looking at credit cards, you know, why, why should we carry that card? There's no point in that, right? We can do it many other ways. Why, why should we pay 30 euros to send money to America? Why should we pay, you know, 8% interest for a loan when we can get it from friends and, and so on? So that is a key trend. So, uh, Bill Gates said tw 12 years ago, we do need banks and we don't need banks. Yeah. Right? And this is actually finally happening. I, I believe we still need banks, just like we still need record labels. But the role is going to be entirely yeah. different. Right? They're yeah. going to have to reinvent. So uh, it, 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 it doesn't make sense to have large real estate investments as a bank. Uh, you can fully digitize that. Uh, why do you need all those employees? You can, you can implement artificial intelligence to a very large degree, uh, maybe even 90%, according to McKinsey recently. So yeah, so what's the value add of all those old school, let's say, uh, investments? I think there could be value in that, for example, if you are Corporate, you have a corporate clients. You want them to come somewhere and pay a premium for coming somewhere. There could be something yeah. in that. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but you know, this is a difficult question. So they, I think, that transformation is actually one of the toughest. You know, compared to media companies, you know, who already have digital assets, now banking is becoming completely digitized and uh, digital currency and all these things. So uh, to build on that, actually, there are many interesting artificial intelligence cases that will disrupt all financial advisors in the next 10 years, like Kensho, that's yeah, a big yeah. case study. So uh, also Citibank, they implemented a new artificial intelligence solutions to, to improve productivity by 30 or 40%. It's only a one, 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 one half a year project of artificial intelligence. So they're, they're talking about substantial improvements using AI above the classic uh, solutions. Big topic. Yep. So thanks very much for tuning in. This is Yuri van Geest. I'm Gerd Leonhardt, CEO of the Futures Agency. If you want to know more, go to thefeaturesagency.com or look us up on Twitter. Thanks for tuning in. Mm -hmm.